Um, yeah, welcome to um, this talk about a comparison about widgets and uh, Qt Quick controls. Um, so we have a very short agenda here. So that's the thing that basically started the whole idea of doing this talk then the actual comparison and a couple of um, my personal conclusions on, on this topic. So this all starts with this question, right? I've seen this, um, I've heard this multiple times from customers uh, in my profession as being a Qt consultant and read it in one form or the other on several Qt mailing lists and forums. Um, if I would start a new project, right? Should I use Qt widgets or Qt quick controls? Usually this, um, this comes from there are several, several angles to that. One angle to that is that people misinterpret the, um, the status of Qt widgets, right? The official status of Qt widgets, it's, it's done. Um, doesn't mean it's deprecated. So people um, uh, interpret it as being deprecated. It cannot be used anymore. It will be dropped soon. Um, this is not the case, right? So one of the main modules of Qt, um, it's actively maintained and it has been around for a long time, right? So this is um, like, the, there's a lot of things that are not, um, there are, um, there's a lot of things you can use without encountering any bug because tons of people have been using Qt widgets for like over a decade. But this is the question that comes up often. And um, obviously, as always, when you have a question of, of, you know, two things that seem to be very similar in, in, in goals, um, the, the answer is usually it depends, right? So, um, meaning you can't give a fixed answer to that. It depends on the project's um, goals, the project circumstances, what people you have, what their um, knowledge is, right? Things like that. So, um, this is why I thought, okay, I'll, I make a, like a side by side, um, feature list of Qt quick, uh, Qt widgets and Qt quick controls so that, um, each of you can, um, potentially, um, evaluate which of the features, um, are an advantage or disadvantage in your specific case, right? Uh, something that might, uh, a feature or property of something might be a disadvantage in one use case or an advantage in another. So this, it really depends on, on the actual, on the actual project. Okay, so this is basically the, the, the core problem that we are um, looking at here. Okay, let's, let's look at the baseline, right? This is the thing that both basically have in common. These are the, the goals. They have the, the very, the basically same goal. And so they share a lot of things um, on the conceptual level, right? Both of them are a set of standard interface elements, right? Um, they, it's about having, you know, standard buttons, a button that you don't have to create yourself by, you know, drawing primitives. It's a button. It can be clicked. It potentially has on, 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 but it has a 3D effect. It has a press effect that, you know, uh, an effect that it can be toggled and st uh, stay down, um, checkboxes, sliders, and so on, right? This, both of them, both of them try to, to deliver this set of, um, standard interface elements that, people, the users are, are used to. Um, both of them um, need to cover the aspect of layouting, meaning that um, elements can change their size, right? A button, a button size is determined mostly by the text on the button. And the text on the button is something that is um, highly dynamic uh, given certain um, changes in the system, right? Like changing in the, in the language, a button, <clears throat> can have can be a very longer if the if the if the word in the in the current user's language is longer than the this string that the developer used for developing so um the user interface needs to cope with that and we usually refer to that as layouting meaning we have some kind of um, helper objects that rearrange our our interface elements in such a way that they fit the new constraints both of them um, aim for styling, meaning there are two aspects of the styling thing. The first is um, we ideally want to have um, integration into the platform look and feel um, to, to make applications that look like a Windows application on Windows, like a Mac application on Mac, right? So um, this is the native styling aspect. We also have, and both both um, also want to allow people to do custom styling. Custom styling can be anything like um, changing the um, certain elements because for you know corporate identity reason or to 
to make the new product look exactly like the old product. Um, sometimes you have like a legacy application that was using a very old toolkit and the new one should ex look exactly or um, as close as possible to the, to the old one to um, reduce the amount of retraining that users have to have, right? Um, this can be, can be um, goals of the, of the custom styling. Sometimes it's just uh, like an application on like mobile devices where you have like a day and a night setting where you want to change color schemes. Um, Based based on based on an internal external um, setting, right? Both of them have the concept I call it the application window, right? This is something that has a menu bar, status bar, and so on. So this is uh, more like a desktop centric um, window type that is, might not be applicable to other platforms, but both of them at least have the concept and want to support that. And also for for dialogues. Um, the last point, also something they share. Um, both of them want to want to have developer want to allow the developers to use standard dialogues for standard things, right? For picking a font, for picking a color, for um, picking a file or directory, right? These are um, goals they both share. And of course, right? Most applications also need some form of custom dialogue in um, like you know setting dialogues and things like that. So. Um, these should also be possible. Again, both of these two frameworks um, try to, to um, provide the necessary means for that. So this is the baseline where we start our comparison. Based, basically, both have the same goals, both um, solve these or um, go through it towards those goals in a different way. <clears throat> right, so the requirements. The requirements um, for those um, Two um, like side by side, right? The, the widget the widget system has a very um, low requirement on the graphics side. It basically requires that the system is able to provide a graphics buffer, um, because Qt has a raster engine. All the Qt widgets can be drawn with the raster engine into a graphics buffer, and basically every system that has UI output can provide graphic buffers, right? Um, the the Qt quick controls. Being part of the Qt Quick um, ecosystem obviously require a system capable of, of running or displaying OpenGL, right? The, the Qt Quick, the Qt Quick rendering system is based on OpenGL scene graph, so Qt Quick controls obviously inherits that requirement. Um, the Qt version, right? Widgets. Qt started as a widget toolkit, so Qt widgets it has been around since the early versions of Qt. Um, those of us who still work with Qt 1 in some version know how different it is nowadays, right? But um, the, the, the point is, if you have a Qt 4, um, if you have Qt 4, because for whatever system requirements do, do not allow you to update um, Qt to a newer version, then you're still good, right? Widgets can be used basically down to, let's say, conveniently down to some, some Qt 3 version, right? I wouldn't go further down that way. Um, for for Qt Quick controls, Qt Quick controls started to appear in 5.1 and have been continually updated and um, enhanced in newer versions. So um, uh, well, it should be um, greater than and equal 5.1, but I'd say a lot of useful stuff has been added, for example, in 5.3. I'm pretty sure some very useful stuff will be added in the in 5.4 uh, and so on. So the most recent version here is really um, always uh, like an uh, extension in features, not just like in, in smaller features or bug fixes. It's really like um, getting newer significant portions of, of the of the goals uh, solved in newer versions of Qt. Right, for brand languages, Qt widgets traditionally is um, part of, the, of the, the old Qt code base, so it's all C++, so meaning that if you use widgets, you basically you need to know C++, and if you want to extend widgets or create new widgets, you need to know C++. Um, for for Qt Quick, obviously it's that's Qt Quick based. So the main language there for using it is QML, um, QML plus JavaScript if necessary. Um, for extending, that can be QML and JavaScript. So um, the Qt Quick system or the Qt Quick idea is that you can always combine already existing elements, even primitives like the rectangle and so on, to new elements um, without. Um, getting an, a, a lot of overhead, so this is 
part of the gains you get through the, through the scene graph rendering. Um, works really well. So um, you can do a lot of extension or creating new types by just using QML and JavaScript. If you really need your own custom rendering, then you also need C++ there. So um, either by using the Painter API that is the same as for widgets or by, you, by directly rendering into um, OpenGL or using the theme graph API. But for that, you need to have uh, C++ knowledge. Um, I have here in, in parentheses um, QML for JavaScript for widgets that, oops, widgets. Wait, sorry. Widgets are, widgets are ultimately just Q objects. So, let's, let's just switch on, so. It's on. <laughs> Oh, the microphone is misplaced. Oh, sorry. Right. Does it work now? Excellent. So, um, right. So, they are ultimately Q objects which can be instantiated by the QML um, engine. So, they only need to be registered for that with the Q type system. Um, as we have shown last year in a talk with the, Q uh, with the declarative widgets project that we have as a research project at KDAP. So, that's also possible. It's just that it's a matter of um, of, of doing that, but I just wanted to have that here for completeness. Right, so requirements. Now to, to one of those um, goals, right? Layouting, how do they implement layouting? So for Qt widgets, um, this has been around for a long time. Those of you who have widget experience, right? This is nothing you have to actively think about anymore. You have uh, different types of layouts. You have like vertical and horizontal box layouts, basically arranging um, widgets, uh, children of one widget in either vertical or horizontal fashion. There is a grid where you can position widget into cells. You can specify exactly which cell um, something goes to, um, if it should span more than one column, span more than one row and so on. There's a special for, uh, form layout. That's a really nice addition. Um, I think that came somewhere during your queued four times that um, allows is a special form of grid layout where you have labels on one side and input elements on the other side, and it takes care of platform specific it takes care of platform specific alignment rules. So for example, on a Mac, um, the labels and the input elements are center aligned or aligned on the on the center in the grid on the, the common the common um, basically divider while on Windows or on most Linux that they're, they're basically and the labels are left aligned and the controls are also left aligned in within their cells. Um, but form layout takes care of that. So that's a really nice um, addition to make, um, to, to improve the platform integration. Um, one thing um, that we have as a, as a slight difference here, that is something that will be a pitfall for people coming from the widget world and doing Qt quick controls because it's a behavioral change. Um, is that layouts in the in the widget world always like govern the whole area of the parent, right? If you have a widget and you put the layout into that, then the layout um, takes the whole space of the of the of the parent and um, rearranges all the children so they basically um, like fill the parent um, in the, in the best way. By default, layouts in QQuick controls do not fill the item you put them into. So. A layout, a layout, um, like a row layout in Qt Quick Controls is just another item. So if you do not anchor that to, to its um, parent, like anchors fill, it will just be the size it has, right? Not, not the size it, this is a, that is available. Um, easy, easy enough to do, right? Just as one of those differences. Um, things you, you also stop to think about after a while. So we have a couple of layouts here, like the row layout, that would be like the horizontal box layout, the column layout, a vertical arranging, you have the grid. Um, you can also position uh, things into any cell you want. You can specify column span, row span, and so on. There is currently no equivalent to the form layout. Um, one thing um, that widgets do, widgets have a size hint, actually two size hints that um, allow the layout to, to retrieve information about how the widget, um, want, which size the widget would like to have which size it has to have um, at least, and size policy, which allows the layout to um, decide which, if you have more space than, uh, than necessary, which of the widgets to grow. Um, 
So this is things that the widgets provide basically. The developer can override either the size hint method, you can subclass that and return a different size hint, or you can even set the size policy. That's something um, you do quite, well, not often, but you can even do through the Qt designer, the overriding the size policy. Um, on, the, on the Qt quick control side, the controls only um, have something called the implicit size, so implicit height and implicit width. Um, they do not, they do not, um, well, they, you can specify as a developer, you can specify um, from outside via attached properties, things like a minimum size. Um, you can also specify from outside um, if the widget should grow or not in within one direction or like both directions of the layout. This is also a slightly, um, you know, new thing. If you're, if you're, if you're coming from the widget world to the quick control world, it is the, the, the quick controls are capable or the layouts of the quick controls are a, a, um, capable of doing that. It's just done in a different way. And if you, if you think of a, of a, a widget, right? Like a line edit and you put that into a horizontal a box layout um, and the widget grows horizontally, then the line edit will just grow because its size policy says to expand, right? Uh, horizontally. Um, if you do a like a text input in or a text yeah a text area in in um, in Qt controls, it just stays the size it has, right? It does not grow automatically. You can do that as a developer using the text area. You can tell the the text area um, or the actually the layout the text areas in to um, you know grow this um, to grow this uh, object via an attached property. Tell it to fill the width or fill the height that is available. Again, both both systems here are more or less equivalent in the feature set that they have. As I said, there's currently no uh, form layout, but it's probably something that that will be added in the near future. Uh, in, the, in the near future, um, the size handling is slightly different. You can still have the same effects, but it's a it's a relearning step if you're moving from one to the other. <clears throat> Just as an example, how that. Um, how that, that, that slightly different behavior um, manifests itself. So if you have this widget code, right, it's a, it's a layout within a widget. Um, it adds three push buttons. Um, you get three push buttons and they have the width of the parent widget because the, that's what the um, vertical box layout does, right? It uh, layouts them vertically and resizes them and the width and to, the, to that of the, of the parent um, since the button size policy allows that. Uh, in QQ controls, if you have this column layout, this is the functional equivalent. If you add the buttons, right, you see here the, the anchors fill, um, filling the parent. Um, so the layout is actually um, filling the whole parent. It does just not um, horizontally resize the buttons. You can easily fix that by basically adding uh, another property to the, um, to the button, attach property, you tell it layout dot fill with dot column true, and then the button will also fill the whole width. Right? It just um, it has a different de uh, default behavior. You can achieve the the other thing as well, uh, the the behavior that if you want to have the behavior that you that you had on widgets. Okay. Um, styling, right? One of the other goals that I mentioned. Styling means both of them can do platform native styling. Um, for that, both of them require to, to run in the context of a queue application object, which for widgets um, has, to, has to be anyway. That's the application type you need to um, instantiate for widgets. So a queue application part of the widget module. You also need that for the, for the native styling for quick quick controls, or at least at the moment, because that contains, that module contains all the style information. Um, that is not part of the, of the Qt GUI module. Um, this is the native styling, right? Again, we have basically equivalency here in, in, in feature sets, so both can do native styling. For the custom styling, this was the other thing I mentioned, is we have two options here on the widget side. That's the cute style sheets that uh, um, try to be similar to the cascading style sheets known from the web, um, which allow to either override single widgets or like, um, or the whole application, and you can specify selectors and 
um, the Qt style, uh, style engine will try to see if a certain rule match, matches a certain widget and then apply the changes to the properties, like changing the background or changing the text color and so on. Um, there is, since Qt widgets it was ultimately designed for being as close as possible to the platform native rendering, every, every widget, uh, every standard widget at least is rendered through a Qt style plugin. The application always has a Qt style uh, plugin um, it usually loads the one from the app uh, from the that's most um, appropriate for the current platform. Um, you can overwrite it as a developer. You develop your own style plugins. Um, so it is it's also a point of customization. So basically everything on a button is rendered um, through the style plugin. So the, when a button renders, it doesn't just draw text. It basically tells the style um, and the style plugin, the current um, style object to draw the, the label or to draw the um, the bevel around the button and so on. So this allows a very, um, this allows Qt uh, traditionally to look very native on, on, on several platforms. On the Qt Quick, on the Qt, Qt Control side, um, the idea there is that every control has a style property and this is an object, a style object, um, specific for the, for the respective control. So the button has a button style um, object and these uh, objects specify the parts of the control. For example, for a button, you have the background and the label, and those are components in the sense of cute, uh, cute quick, cute quick um, items and components. So you can overwrite that. So you can specify your own component that is the label. It doesn't have to be like a text object. Whatever you want can be the label on your button. You can overwrite it also basically um, for each button that you have, right? Each button has the style property. You can set that on each button individually. If you want one button to have a, you know, slightly different label or background, you can do that. Um, so it's all done inside QML basically. <clears throat> um, how does it look? So I have, um, I've used the, um, for the widgets, the uh, style sheet variation here because that, that actually fits onto a slide, right? Doing a new um, style plugin would not fit on uh, fit onto several slides. So, um, if you wanted to change the background color of a button in the widgets um, in the widgets um, world, you would st set the style sheet um, right. That that our um, selector here is it matches Q push button. Um, since you only set it for this push button, that doesn't matter a lot. But we could do that um, application wide, and it would, this this rule would match only all the Q push buttons. Um, and in this case, we we say okay, the background color property we want that white, um, meaning that when we when the push button is shown, it has a white background. The more or less functional equivalent to that is this in Q quick controls. As I said, every control has a style um, attribute and a type specific uh, style class, basically. So we have a button style here that's associated with the button and it has a background property and um, traditionally that's a rectangle, but you can put basically anything here that's it's a, um, a cute, cute component or a cute QML component. Um, well, it's a cute, cute component, it has to render something. So here I'm, I'm choosing a rectangle. I set the color, so that's the background color basically then the, on white and since I want to keep the border, which is not part of the, of the um, basically I overwrite the border as well, right? The original, the original background rectangle had um, border drawn as well. I basically repeat that from the, from the base, um, from the base style. This is also one of the things that um, can be a bit tricky, right? If you just want to change like the, just the one aspect. So you want to keep the item basically the same thing. Um, since you're overwriting the item that was originally the, the, the delegate for the background, you have to repeat everything that was um, that the other thing did. Right? Luckily, that's available in source, so you can copy that into your style if you want to. Um, okay, so styling, right? Um, custom styling. Platform styling is done internally in both cases, so you don't have to worry about that at, anyway. <clears throat> Okay, um, application window. Also one of those concepts that both um, have as a goal. Um, in Qt widgets, we know that the class for that is QMain window. QMain window is a, um, yeah, it's a very nice thing, right? It has a menu bar or 
can have a menu bar if you want one. You can have a st status bar. You can have any number of toolbars you want. You can put them on the top of the of the application at the bottom left or right. So there's uh, four docking positions for the toolbars. You can put multiple toolbars on the same position, and they will just be stacked depend so uh, in in like yeah left to right order for the for the horizontal docking positions. Um, there are dock widgets again can be positioned all around the all around the, the sides, um, basically inside the toolbar areas, um, uh, closer to the central widget. And there is one central widget that is actually the content of the main menu. If you, they want, once you put the uh, widget into the into this um, central widget position, it will be automatically like um, put into the layout spot of this of this um, main window. And um, it will be resized when the main window resizes, uh, and so on. So its its layout can then rearrange the children. Okay. Um, so main window for everyone who has uh, been using widgets. This is um, I'm not saying anything new here. On the QQ control side, there's also a special class for that. It's called the application window. Um, it also has a menu bar, um, or can have a menu bar. So this is still your decision, right? It can have a status bar. It can have one toolbar. There is currently no way to have more than one toolbar. Um, there's also slightly behavioral difference. So the, the toolbar um, does not have any layout. So if you basically add tool buttons to the toolbar, they're just all in the same space, right? So you need a row layout in there to actually make them, you know, um, um, so add, uh, in horizontally um, layouted. But the other, the other, of course, that's that that might be a an advantage if you don't want to have like you know a horizontal layout if a toolbar so, uh, if you want to have that differently because that's then under your control status bar there is a status bar class or element type in QQuick controls um, but you can put any other item into the status bar position so you don't have to use the status bar um, element um, both um, frameworks have the concept of actions. So the action is a non-visual object that contains all the uh, information about a certain user trigger of action. That is usually a text that should be displayed if the action is uh, accessible through a menu. That's the icon um, that's usually also shown in the menu, but uh, primarily, of course, needed for the toolbar button. Um, it can have a shortcut associated, uh, a descriptive text that should be shown in the status bar if the action is hovered over and so on, right? The action is something that is uh, almost equivalent on both sides. That's slightly different property names, but you know, that's, that's, um, that doesn't change anything. Um, you can add them to the menus. You can add them to the toolbars. Um, if you add an action to a toolbar in the widget world, it automatically or uh, implicitly creates a tool button for that. Um, and uh, on the QQ resource, you create a tool button yourself. So you create a tool button and then set the action uh, property of the tool button to the action that you're having. Again, um, is is uh, is nice if you don't want to have a tool button, right? Because then you always have to explicitly think about how you want to visualize the action inside the toolbar. There's one thing I discovered. I'm not sure if that's a bug or if that is intentional. But if you there's a content item inside the uh, application window, which is basically the, the equivalent to the central widget, if you put any item in there, it just has its its or um, it keeps its original size. It does not um, stretch to the available space. Um, so you also need to do the the like filling the parent thing here to have it actually fill the available space. Again, it's it's just more explicit, right? It's you can't do that. It's just not automatic. So it's um, one of those, you know, things that you might fall over if you're transitioning from using widgets to Qt Quick Controls. Right. Um, dialogues. So dialogues is also um, um, we have again two um, um, parts here: the standard dialogues. Standard dialogues are things that Qt provides, um, ideally in a form that uh, allow native integration. So um, the Q standard dialogues on a widget side, they have static helper methods like you know, get open file name, for example, for the Q file dialog. And these have the additional advantage of basically delegating to a native implementation. So on Windows, you get the Windows file dialog and so on. Um, there, there's, a, there's a whole set of them, right? We have the color and file and font picker um, dialog. 
We have a progress dialog, which is not you know, really advanced. It's just a progress file and a cancel button inside a dialog. There's the message box, which basically is a dialog form for showing warnings, questions to the user with the um, respective icon. Um, there is obviously print dialog for printing and a special wizard dialog. This is a multi-page dialog, right? You can, um, where you can step next and previous through, through a set of pages. Um, Qt controls. Um, this is one of the areas where newer versions of Qt um, change a lot. So the font, I think the font picker was the one just added in Qt 5.3. So um, previous to that, there was just a color in the file dialog. Um, there is a message dialog that also is basically the equivalent to the message box on the Qt side, uh, on the widget side, which allow you to, to, to show messages or questions to the user. Um, yeah, um, as we see, we don't have like progress that was basically useless anyway. So that's easily done um, with a, the standard dialog base and then just adding a um, progress bound that not that progress bars have been um, in use uh, lately anyway. So most of the user interfaces nowadays show progress at, at, in a, some inline form, like an inline um, progress bar or um, some other form of progress indication that is not a, a modal dialog. Um, there is, as far as I know, currently no printing support in Qt Quick at all. Um, but um, right, this is also something that, that is very likely to change in the next versions of Qt. There is a, both have for the customization for, for your own dialogues, both have a base class or a base type for dialogues. That's Qt dialog in which, uh, for the widgets, right? Qt dialog. Um, can be shown modal or non-modal, depending on more or less depending on the way how you show it. If you call the exec method, this will be a modal dialog and return um, once the dialog has been closed, or you can just show it, it will be a non-modal dialog. Right? You can also specifically set the modal flag. Um, for, for even better platform integration, at some point, uh, Qt Widgets got this Qt dialog button box thing that's a basically encapsulation of standard buttons. So it's a, it's one widget that you can add to the dialog and then you specify via enums or via flags um, which of the buttons you want to show. Like you want, I want to show the save button, the discard button and like a cancel button. And um, depending on the platform, they, they might appear in a different order. So it's one of those features for better platform integration. Um, to, you can still access those buttons, right? If you have um, like a save button and you want to disable the save button um, until a certain um, you know, um, state has been reached or until a certain input has been made by the user, you just retrieve the, the button associated with, this, with the save enum and just call its enabled method um, to, to switch it, to switch it to, to, to disabled. Um, there's also um, two virtual functions in QDialog, accept and reject um, slots. They are usually connected to the dialog button box of the dialog, um, which if you return from them, do not close the dialog, right? If you, I, I accept, in, you, if accept gets called because the user clicked okay or save or whatever, then um, you decide you can still do a final check on your on the on the data in the dialog. Like, oh, this is not acceptable input. Um, you just return from accept, right? And the dialog just remains open. If you call the base class implementation, it will close the dialog. Same for reject. Um, on the Qt Quick control side, this is not as uh, fully implemented yet. So we have the standard buttons, which is slightly, which is more or less equivalent to the dialog button box. So we, again, we have like a flag field that we um, have to specify the um, buttons that we want to have. Like if we want to have an okay or a cancel button or like the save this card or like, you know, continue um, um, abort and so on. Um, there's currently no way to access those buttons. So this is hidden inside the implementation of this dialog based type. Um, so you cannot switch any of those buttons to disabled if it, if um, this is what what you would want to do. So I would consider that currently a limitation of the dialog, but the dialog base class itself is very new. That also was added in five or three. So um, this the, the the possibility to actually um, influence the buttons inside this basically dialog button box might have been added for five point four. I'm I'm not up to date there. 
Um, it's also currently not possible to intercept closing of the dialog in any way. So all of the actions, so basically for all buttons, there are, there are signal handlers in, in Qt, uh, Qt Quick or QML, right? So you have the on, okay, uh, on, apply, and so on. And um, all of them, um, basically in, this, in the JavaScript context there, you can still do whatever operation you want, but the dialog will be closed afterwards, right? So you can currently not uh, intercept closing of the dialog. Um, Okay, tooling, um, not necessarily directly part of the feature set of the respective library, but something um, affecting you as developers um, nevertheless. Um, the tools that we have available when dealing with either of the two frameworks, right? When we do, uh, when we're using widgets, we usually use that through the designer, right? We can manually code widgets that, that is sometimes um, um, easier than to use the designer is sometimes it's necessary because like the number of elements or the number of buttons or whatever depends on a on a on a on a value that the program um, gets elsewhere that is not determined already at at build time like user input or config or something you it, you get from the network right then um, you have to do that in C plus plus but most of the time. Um, we can use the Qt designer to arrange our widgets to pre layout thing and so on. Um, very nice tool. As we know, the, the workflow for that is um, the Qt creator creates an XML file. Um, um, it has full control over that. So it is basically the only one writing ever to this file. There's another tool called UIC, the user interface compiler. Well, it's not a compiler, it's a code generator. Right, it takes the XML file as input, it never writes to that, and then generates C++ code um, that will create the same widget scene that the designer has, um, that, that you had seen in designer. Um, right. That is then being used as for you as a developer when you, um, Usually it's it's by delegation, so you instantiate this this object that has been or the class that has been generated, and then you refer to that through a pointer. So you usually have this UI pointer. This is also the the, the structure that Qt Creator generates. If you create a user uh, a designer form class, um, so this is the like so you have access to all the widgets, but but you do not necessarily derive from that. You can still derive from that class. So this is was the approach that was used in Q3 times, um, but yeah, that's not necessary. So delegation is usually better because then your class um, does not uh, is not part of the dependency chain of the generated code. This is slightly different for Q3 controls. Um, so there's also a designer nowadays in Qt Creator um, allows you to visually um, lay out or uh, create um, um, Qt Quick scenes. Um, it's it basically works on the document directly, so on the QML document that um, you are also editing as a, as a as a developer, which of course gets it into a slightly um, like awkward position because it has to be able to um, you know to deal with the changes you make, right? So it's a it's a it's a round trip thing. So um, which is since QML is a really good language, is um, more doable than passing C++ code manually written one, right? So um, the original designer would not be able, or actually there's, there's, it's really difficult for any kind of tool to um, basically um, you know, recover from, from someone changing the generated C++ code because you, can't, you have such a wide uh, possibility what they can do with C++. Um, QML is a, is a bit better in that respect. Um, of course, it's still, um, as far as I know, so I'm, I'm also not up to date to the, of the current state, it has. Uh, it is difficult for this for this tool to um, deal with uh, more complex property bindings and properties, right? So you can assign if if the assignment for a property is a simple value, that it's trivial for it um, to to also like um, have a way in the UI to edit that. But if you have like complex uh, property bindings and so on, um, I'm currently I don't know what it does. Um, I, I guess it it just does not touch that property, um, but. Um, that's that's more or less um, something that I would also assume um, will be improved a lot in the future, right? It's all very new um, technology there. Um, for testing, um, Q the Q test framework, 
um, has support for both the, the normal C++ unit testing as well as QML unit testing. So it doesn't change anything there. Um, you can still use most of the tools that you use for UI testing. So if you're using Squish for testing your widget um, application, you can still use that for, for the Qt Quick, uh, Qt Quick controls um, UIs. So this is, this are, those are tools that are capable of, of equal, equally dealing with both sides. Um, right. Um, if you have, if you're using the, the KW Gamma Ray tool, um, it can also deal with both, um, you know, frameworks in, in, in a similar fashion. So, um, nothing changes there. Where you again have a slightly different, um, tooling situation is when it comes for, for analysis and checking, right? So in C, since widgets is C++, there is like, you know, several decades of research into um, analyzing and checking and um, um, profiling C++ applications. So there is tools available for, the, uh, for a really wide range of vendors for doing anything like static code analysis, like things that could probably be bad, um, you know, debugging, the, the debuggers um, provided by IDEs are usually, um, yeah, depends on the IDE, but have, uh, are usually very good, right? So um, the if you if you use the C plus plus situation as a baseline, um, then we currently do not have the same level on the on the on the Qt Quick side. Um, also because it's very new and it's basically only one vendor working on that, right? Or we as the community, um, additional to the to Digio. Um, Qt Creator has integrated debuggers for both the JavaScript part and the QML part. Um, there is also a profiler, so um, there's really nice tools in there in Qt Creator. Um, one of the aspects that is not covered here in this comparison is that since we are dealing with like two contexts here, right? So we have the core application of uh, is usually still C++, and the UI will be Qt Quick. So you're having you basically have two contexts that the program runs through, right? So if um, um, a user clicks somewhere, then this is part of the QML engine. And at some point this trans this transits into a whatever slot call inside C++ and po potentially going back again. So that the stack trace might not always be easy to follow, right? It might not even be complete while in a, in a, in a, in a, in a fully C++ object, right? The stack trace is everything that you, you have been running through. Um, so slight, slight, slight difference there. But um, again, I, I would be um, uh, I would be surprised if that does not change a lot um, in the near future because that's obviously um, things that people are, will be working on. Okay, tooling. Right. Ah, which uh, actually already leads me to the conclusion. Um, right. So um, we started with the question of should I uh, use which one should I use? And as I said, it depends. Because because um, both of them are still viable technologies, uh, a viable technology stack for the for the same problem, right? If you need a standard UI, um, both of them will deliver the needed features. There's um, slightly different, um, you know, um, aspects here for if you have if you have already a cute quick application and you would probably not want widget around that, you would just go for the quick controls. If you have a widget applications. Um, you probably do not want to port that, right? It's all for new applications where you decide which which either side you want to um, to go for. Qt Quick Controls is currently not as as fully featured or as um, the um, it doesn't have all the things, right? As we've seen, especially the dialogue, which seems to be an area that is currently uh, under heavy development. Um, it's currently not possible to 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 you know disable buttons or um, not close the dialogue which is could be a total no-go in some situation or not not be a problem at all for for simple applications um and it could change uh, you know like tomorrow or whatever they, when they release queued 4.5 right so this is all based on on my evaluation i did with um 5.3 um right um as i said um, knowledge um, is usually easy uh, transferable if it comes to type, right? So you have, if you have a few push button, that's a button, checkbox, checkbox, slider, slider, they behave in very similar ways. Um, they, they, yeah, they, um, yeah, 
right? So this this is if if you know your way around in widgets, you can easily transfer that knowledge into the into quick controls. You will be finding the correct quick control. There's only very few that have different names, like the Q main window being called the application window. Um, the other thing that I have discovered is that um, some things like behavioral changes, like as I said, the resizing behavior of things, especially the interaction with layout. Um, since I was like assuming if I put a button and the line edit into a row layout and the row layout stretches the whole width of the right of the widget or of the, the parent item, then the, the line, the line edit equivalent would, would grow to the to the remaining size. It does not by default, right? Or the, the, the central widget of the main window does resize with the main uh, application window, things like that. So this there is behavioral change in there that um, is um, could be problematic for somebody coming from Qt Widget. It would obviously not be a problem for anyone who has not basically been tainted by Qt Widget. So I would not count it as a as a you know negative point. It's just you know you have to learn new things for for new stuff. So that's 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 the way it is. Right. So, um, but I guess the main conclusion is they are both really really. Um, um, aiming for the same thing and Qt Quick Controls is rapidly evolving, right? But you should not shy away of, of using Qt uh, widgets just because um, you think it's, it won't be there like, you know, next year. So it's it's not going anywhere, right? So it's not going away. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions? Quite simple to create custom widgets. For example, we have an uh, editor which includes the engine is written on the Oxford web. And, uh, is it hard to create such custom uh, controls for widgets? Right. So the, the question is, I'm just repeating the question for the for the recording. Um, it's very really easy to to create custom widgets. Um, uh, and is is that also like how difficult is it for quick uh, use quick controls? Um, I'd say, especially in the context that you said with um, an open shell rendering um, and external open shell rendering, there is an item for that in the Qt Quick. I think it's the Qt Quick buffer, whatever item, buffered item. No, I, I don't uh, don't remember the correct name, which allows you to have basically a separate open shell context rendering into that item and putting that into the into the widget scene. So um, this extension point is pretty similar, I guess. So it's even even easier to integrate an open shell rendered um, for an open shell rendered thing into that because the whole thing is open shell rendered. Um, you can still do things with a no normal painter API because there is also a subclass for that the Q quick painted item that allows, allows you to draw a paint an item with a new normal painter API. So um, it's not totally equivalent, but I would say that's uh, almost on the same complexity level. And in this case, may, maybe even easier. Yeah. Um, you gave an example of one slide uh, uh, which described that, that in the widget world, there's also one use case for QML and JavaScript uh, on the slide requirement. Of right. Can you elaborate on this? So um, I was uh, so the, the question is um, whether I could elaborate on the on the um, the line ahead about using QML and JavaScript with widgets. So basically, the QML engine is independent of any kind of UI. It sits below Qt Quick. So Qt Quick is one of those libraries using or being um, available for QML. QML and the only restriction that QML has is that the thing that it can that you can use as elements need to be derived from Q objects and to meet register need to be registered with the QML um, type system. And most of the widgets are Q objects. Right? All of them are Q objects, right? And most of them have a constructor that doesn't require any arguments. So they can be basically directly um, registered with the QML type system instantiated in QML. They're not, not in Qt Quick, right? So there's still different words. So we have a research project at KDAP called Declarative Widget that's also on GitHub. So GitHub slash KDAP slash declarative widgets that does that. So we have like a library which register most of the vi widgets that are available, and you can just use QML to create a widget, um, like uh, as a widget, a widget application. You can create a widget application with QML. Um, it's a very nice porting aid if you want to get, um, you know, if you want to learn QML without also having to learn Qt Quick at the same time, because it has the same yeah, abstraction between the core application and the, the, the UI, 
it is QML, but it's still widgets, right? So you can still use all the widgets here. In widgets. Okay, um, how difficult is it to implement something like a flickable in Qt widgets? So um, I think there's, there's, I guess if, if we would search for that um, with a code search engine or Google, we would probably find a couple of those kinetic scrollers. So I've seen that multiple times in um, with different customers already that they had implementation of this kinetic scrolling. So accelerating, deaccelerating. Oh, it's even included? Yeah. Okay, nice. So, um, thank you. So, it's even included uh, apparently in Qt5, uh, 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 a handler for doing kinetic, kinetic scrolling. So, um, but it's, it's, it, it should be doable. So, it's just, um, just you know, a mouse processing and, uh, and dealing with it more, um, you know, in a more complex way than just linear uh, movement. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, so yeah, my, my comparison was mostly done for on the, on the functional aspect or like which features are available. Um, the question was um, for the performance. So um, that totally depends, of course, on the system, right? If you have a system that, that has these, um, the open shell requirement really nailed down, right? If you have a very good GPU in there, which is most modern um, devices, then I'd say that the, the QQ controls is, is probably way more performant, right? So it can offload a lot of things, a lot of um, like which part is visible, clipping and so on, off, offload that to the, to the GPU, which is um, you know, specialized in doing that. Um, the, lower, the lower you get in the, in the, in the system, in the system, um, uh, on, the, on the system um, specs, the, 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 the more problematic it gets. So if you have no GPU, um, I heard some, I overheard something that there is probably, that there is going to be a software rendered um, um, variant for, for the scene graph. You can always use like an OpenGL library that's actually doing software rendering, but I, I don't think that will be, um, that will give you a, 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 nice, a nice performance. So, um, so Qtwitch is still um, one of the things that you can use when you have really, you know, hardware that is not suited for this, uh, for open shell rendering. Um, as for memory consumptions, I actually don't know. So um, I have not, basically you would have to create the same application twice and then check it. I would I guess that um, that you would need more memory um, if you're using Qt Quick Controls because you're instantiating so many objects. Um, because a button, a button will be at least two objects, so the, like, the rectangle and the label. And um, you will instantiate a lot of objects. So I guess the memory, the memory consumption is higher than with, with a widget. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a good question. So how does then um, toolbar and menu bar? Um, match the look and feel on mobile platforms um, that I actually don't know. So um, I've mostly focused on on the desktop aspects there. Um, but you're you're welcome to to show by um, at the Keda booth and ask one of our mobile specialists. Um, yeah. And other things are different, but not many actual uh, roles and functions to be widgets. Are there, is there anything that is good there to the uh, pro that would come need to use? Right. So the, the question is um, um, as we have seen, there are a couple of things missing that we have in widgets. Um, uh, are there any really advantages um, or like big advantages there that would um, you know, make you um, like swing in the favor of quick quick throws. I guess the the main the main feature um, is that it is Qt quick means you have a you have all the Qt quick 
um, nicely is like animations available. So if you have things, you can rotate any user interface X element, for example, right? Not just like text, which you can always do with the painter. You can rotate the button, you can rotate the checkbox. Um, you can use opacity, something that you cannot easily do with, um, with uh, widgets, like fade in or fade out user interface elements. So you can, um, this is not necessarily something we, we have uh, in the context of a desktop application traditionally, but this is uh, something that users are kind of like expecting nowadays. So, um, like this, this um, thing. that is something you get basically for free with Qt Quick controls because it's Qt Quick and you have those things in there. Um, also, um, if you're doing your Qt Quick, since it's QML, you can basically have different UIs on the same application core. You could at start time decide which um, UI to load within the same application. You could even at runtime decide to reload um, um, the UI and lo load a different one, which is very nice for develop during development because you basically can make your application watch your QML files and you change the QML file and it reloads automatically, right? So you have like a very short um, um, development uh, um, cycle. Any more questions? So we still have time. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, question is about translations or internationalization. So that's the same thing. So it's, it's covered by Qt in the same way. So in, in a Qt widget application, you would pass uh, user visible strings to the, through the TR function. And basically in, 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 in QML and Q, uh, Qt quick, you have the QSTR function, but it works the same way. So you pass that in. Um, it will be extracted by the by the L, L update tool, just like from 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 UI files, and it's uh, that's totally the same the same uh, infrastructure for for both um, for both objects. Okay, anyone? Okay, well then, thank you again.